we talk of uh, oneness between, well, oneness of enlightenment, we feel one with God. Uh, strangely, I'm starting with the premise that we're one. You know, that your God is the personification of your values. Uh, true, your values are not right yet, and you quickly find out what's therefore right by worshipping your God, by practicing living according to your values for real, in devotion to, and the feedback from your experience, and no doubt, the lesson, I say no doubt, and, and as I understand it, the lessons we go through from day to day in our living here in this universe uh, brings us closer to a much better understanding and this is life eternal to know God according to John 17 so in a sense what's conceived of by um, especially uh, Eastern uh, esotericism, esotericism, is it? Mm, not quite sure it's the word there, but you know what I mean. The Eastern view is that um, enlightenment is oneness with God. You know, I am He, I am He, blessed Spirit, I am He. Or as the Christian story would have Jesus put it, I and my Father are one. And indeed, the, the, that which was inexplicable about the um, Christian view of the Trinity, that, well, uh, God, that is Father and Son and Holy Spirit, they're all one of the same substance, although when we say substance we don't mean um, necessarily a physical apparition of such. You know, God is spirit, and they that worship him should worship him in spirit and in truth, or can only worship him in spirit and in truth. As the Jesus um, delivery has it. In a strange way, I feel that I start with the right premise when I take recognition of the commandment being that you should love your God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength and that your God can only be the personification as you see it <clears throat> of all that you consider good of all that you truly value how could you love anything but what you value by definition you may value it wrongly you may see it wrongly but I mean God is much bigger than our petty mistakes and leads us through in loving kindness as our dad so to speak our heavenly loving dad so let me um, hang on a minute just find a reading here that I had I'm not certain whether it was yesterday now or this morning well <coughs> page 201 of the autobiography by Paramhansa. Um, well, he gives uh, a two-paragraph quotation. Actually, he doesn't give the reference to it, which is unusual. I guess he's... Anyway, he says, The Vedas declare that the ignorant man who rests content with making the slightest distinction between the individual soul and the supreme self, God in other words, is supposed sorry, is exposed to danger. Ah, yes, he does say, Shankara is the person, the great monist has written. Where there is duality by virtue of ignorance, one sees all things as distinct from self. When everything is seen as the self, then there is not even an atom other than self. As soon as knowledge of the reality has sprung up, there can be no fruits of past action, he's thinking of karma now, of course, to be experienced, owing to the unreality of the body. 
in the same way as there can be no dream after waking. End of quote. Well, that's of course putting it in the Eastern view. Um, and it's well to remember that the Jesus story is um, uh, delivered in the Middle East, isn't it? Between East and West. It's not a Western story, nor Eastern. And really was hoped, I'm sure, to bring unity in the world, not division. Man has made the world into a dual phenomenon of religion and philosophy. Instead of the oneness of God's heavenly family, us all. Love you, Dad. Thank you, Dad. When uh, Shankara says uh, there's no dream after waking, it reminds me strongly of on gaining enlightenment. All the troubles of the ever being in worlds like our own vanish, just as a dream on waking. And what we have experienced as so intensely important, you see, it's, it's scarcely a memory, so to speak. Mm. In fact, Shankara, I guess, would say, it's not even a memory. I'm not sure. Well, I wouldn't be, would I? I'm not yet fully enlightened. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Dad. <laughs> well, it is the case that in the world you have division between secular and religious, between one religion and another between one sect within a religion and another, and so it goes on. And in that sense, Jesus says, I've come to bring division between, you know, um, child and parents and so on, um, brother and sister, Matthew ten thirty four onwards. <coughs> There's come to bring division within the family. So of course the earth will continue as it does. Mix of good and evil. There will be a division. But he's prayed for us those that long to love God as Dad. Praise that we be one in unity, in harmony. As he says, as I am in thee and thou in me, that they may be one in us. John 17. Hmm. Thank you, Dad. You see, the reality of someone, for instance, on Earth, is that uh, you're separate. Separate from especially your enemies and so on. But that is actually not the case. We are all one. We are all of God. We can't exist for one moment but for God. We are all part of his great story. We are children. We may not recognize our oneness.
oneness with each other. But we're all children of God. We're all created of God. We are all here as children. All of us. Some may be a bit more mature than others. A bit older. <laughs> so when Jesus prays that we be one, well, that we realize we're one. One in Him. And it's the delusion that we're not that is the division. It is the not caring. But those who have ears to hear are rescued into realizing the oneness. They no longer do wrong to their friends or their enemies. They actually don't see others as enemies. We're all children. God loves and cares for all that he's made. In a sense, you see, it's the eternity that counts, not the transitory, except that the transitory secures the eternal. We become adults here, in the phenomenal world of uh, time, space, matter and change, uncertainty, good and evil. <laughs>